Hey guys, Smitty here, continuing our rubric of class rebalance recap. Today I would like to talk about 4 more classes that received changes in last 2 months. If you missed the first video, make sure to watch it, if you want to acknowledge yourself about all the classes I missed so far. In this video we will start with Nova and make our way down to the list. Nova received several changes in 2 patches. Both of them brought interesting buffs that transformed Nova into a sort of tank class of BDM. But since this game is mostly solo, roles are irrelevant. Still, having at least one Nova in your guild to support the rest of players, and also having a strong frontliner that can block tons of damage is always a rather good thing. Starting with her passive, Nova received a great damage buff raising the effectiveness of the Queen's summon. Its damage was increased from 50% to 80% of Nova's damage, which is noticeable for PvP and PvE DPS. Even though the damage is kind of random, still having an invincible automated clone spamming skills around is a great assist damage. Not only that, during Queen Summon, Nova gains 15% PvP damage reduction, 10% PvP damage and 50% monster damage. Major buff reworked received the skill Frost Shield. Cooldown was increased by 2 seconds, which was the only nerf. In exchange, it gained unique passive effect that buffs rear allies PvP damage reduction by 10% for 6 seconds. This is why Nova must always be the frontline in any massive fights, and the new flow will help Nova to do so. Also, forward guard immunity was activated to be used in Arena and PvE damage was increased by 70% overall. Now talking about the new flow added called Frostbite March, it changed the behavior of the skill. Casting it will buff Nova and change her stance for up to 7 seconds or 10 hits. During this stance she raises her shield, gaining permanent power guard, buff and super armor, making her almost immune to damage and CC. During that time, Nova can move at a very slow speed in any direction, also using other skills will cancel the effect. First hit applies knockback on hit, subsequent hits apply freeze on hit and last will apply knockdown. Also, last hit can be triggered if needed by pressing the skill once again, which will unleash the last hit straight away. At last, another bonus to that flow is that every second it triggers extra one summon shard, leading it to a queen summon with every full skill cast. In the second patch, Flow Frostbite March received an increased attack speed and reduced cast time. Done with that skill, few more changes were implemented to other skills. Nice Charge received a range increase and PvP damage increase by 50%. Rising Ice Storms received range increase. Winter's Frost skill received a last hit attack speed increase. Quarantum Charge received an extra charge that can be triggered by consuming 30 more mana and a 10 second buff for another 5% PvP damage reduction for 10 seconds. Frenzied Bishop unfortunately for Nova lost its super armor in Arena decreasing even farther her effectiveness for arena fights, but instead received increased range. At last the flow Assault, that can be triggered with both Glacial Burst and Friends and Bishop, was changed to be a medium charge that deals up to 6 hits, dealing 100% damage of the skill it was used with, inflicting freeze on hit and has super armor in field. And that was it for the changes for Nova. As was said already, she became the best frontliner with interesting support buff and permanent passive damage. If there were no grabs, she would be almost unkillable. Continuing with the class's balance recap, next class will be Blade Master. Blade Master received less changes that increased his mobility and survivability to fit the current meta, but overall didn't make him excel in anything. First skill Crescendo received attack range increase and an extra 50% PvE damage. Rising Storm gained an utility feature that sends a small tornado to travel at a long distance, dealing one hit applying knockback on hit, totaling of 25% of the total skill damage, but doesn't stack in melee range, since it makes part of it. 
similar to Squall that sends two tornadoes instead. Retaliation received a float that allows Blademaster to additionally perform a charge after using the skill, consuming 50 MP and dealing 50% damage of the whole skill. In case of level 3 skill, the flow will deal total of 1605% damage. Also, it has super armor in field and knockdown on hit. Quick draw also received similar buff as retaliation, but with a simple difference of it being part of the skill. Be careful since in arena the extra charge doesn't have super armor. Also, quick draw received a 20% PvE damage increase. At last, the passive Resonant Blade received a small change in its stats. Receiving attack or movement speed debuff increases PvP damage reduction by 10% for 10 seconds, and when using one of the skills needed to trigger the passive, also increase PvP damage reduction by an extra 10% for 10 seconds. And that was it for Blade Master, small changes that didn't affect his fate in top list. Continuing with our next hero will be Titan. Titan received even less changes and unfortunately mostly nerfs. First skill Air Shatter received a buff for the flow, additional attack to deal 120% damage instead of 100. Raging Thunder's damage was decreased by 10%. The grab spill driver cooldown was nerfed and increased by 3 seconds from 12 to 15 seconds. And at last, the flow for Lava Piercer and Falling Rock instilled fear damage was increased by 400% damage from 350. Can say it made Titan unplayable, but for sure these two major nerfs for Raging Thunder and Grab affected his performance in both mass PvP and arena PvP. And the fourth and the last class to review for today will be Primrose. Primrose received many good buffs that increased further her mobility, survivability, PvE and PvP damage and added a great flow to the counter skill Petal Ward, making her PvP immunity damage exchange even more deadly. The passive Frost Flower was buffed to increase PvP damage reduction by 10% for 15 seconds and also an extra 20% monster damage increase for 15 seconds. First skill Absolute Zero received a 10% PvP damage buff. Frost Halo also received a great 20% damage buff for both PvE and PvP. Infinity Stab last hit knockup was changed to trigger faster than before. Glacial Wall's Flow IC Illusion received an ability to extend the IC Invincible movement with cost of 40 mana. Midnight Requiem received a 20% PvE damage buff. And at last the cherry on top, Petal Ward, received a Flow Overpower that adds a combination of fast attacks dealing 200% extra damage. As an example, at level 3, the full cast of the skill with overpower flow allows to deal about 4200% damage. The downside of it, the skill has no branches. And that was it for the recap of the changes for today's 4 classes. I remind you that you can watch the previous recap video by clicking the link in the description. Also, there are still 10 more classes to be reviewed in the following videos. To not miss them and also the upcoming top ranking list by the end of the class balance recap, make sure to subscribe and activate the notifications. Don't forget to leave a like and comment down the video. That was Smitty, have a nice day!